Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to take a look at a micro cooler for AMD based systems. This is the Gelid Slim Silence AM4. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video we'll be taking a look at Gelid's Slim Silence AM4. Now, this is the perfect cooler if you've got a very, very small system. This is actually supported for systems as small as 1U, so that's basically a 28mm high cooler, which is absolutely tiny. So for those of you that are building mini ITX systems, such as possibly something along these lines, and you've been considering using the standard Wraith Stealth cooler, and you want something which is a little bit higher performing, and possibly looks a little bit nicer, and maybe is just a little bit smaller, because this is a little bit on the high side for some of those smaller enclosures, the Gelid Slim Silence M4, is possibly going to be right up your street. Okay, so I've been doing some testing with this cooler over the last few days, and I've got to say, it is a performer. And we've certainly got some results to show you a little bit later, so you can actually see that and see my findings. But essentially, it is certainly an upgrade over the Wraith Stealth in more ways than one. So let's take a look at the packaging, we'll look at the cooler, we'll go through my results, and then we'll come back with my final thoughts. So packaging wise, pretty simple. Essentially, it's just a plain box. Got Slim Silence AM4. This is only for AM4 based setups, so it doesn't work with AM3, unfortunately, and because the mounting mechanism is purely for those AM4 boards. So far, I haven't found a board that it doesn't physically fit due to the fact that it adheres very, very closely to the AM4 setup. Application wise, this is rated up to a TDP of 85 watts, which is a slightly unusual rating as a lot of CPUs are around about the 95 watts or 65 watts. So I suppose 65 watts with a little bit of overclocking kind of puts you in the 85 watt territory. So essentially this is going to be suitable for Athlons and Ryzen processors of anything up to around about the 3600 I would say. Although ideally for most people in ITX systems and for myself personally, I've been using it with the Ryzen 3 2200G and it's been absolutely brilliant. On the back of the box, it goes into some detail about the specifications. So it is a 1U low profile heat pipe cooler. It actually has two heat pipes on this particular cooler, two 8 mil heat pipes to really aid with the cooling efficiency. Obviously, being an extremely small cooler, it does have to have a few tricks up its sleeve, and it certainly does seem to. The actual design itself is very well optimised for airflow, and with those heat pipes as well, it really does go the extra distance over the Wraith Stealth. Another nice feature of this is, if you are looking for longevity, this actually does come with a five-year warranty, which I think is pretty awesome. Pricing-wise, at the moment in the UK, around about 17 to 18 pounds. I have seen it a little bit cheaper and I've seen it a little bit more expensive. Over in the US on the Gelid store, it's looking at $22. And in euros, you're looking at about 17 or 18 euros. So a pretty decent price and not a massive outlay if you're looking to upgrade your stealth cooler. Certainly is a little bit cheaper as well than some of the other known brands, which are known to be very high performing, but for certainly a larger price point. So taking the cooler out of the box, and this is the cooler itself. You don't really get a great deal in here. There is a installation manual and also in here somewhere there is a sticker as well so if you want to put a jellied sticker on your case there's one included but we won't be using that I don't think so looking at the actual cooler itself as you can see it is absolutely tiny and pretty much is only about the same size as the AM4 mountings themselves height wise again 28 millimeters so very very small very very compact and the fan itself is actually recessed into that so you could potentially have something which is a very, very close tolerance. But obviously, the closer you get tolerance-wise, that will introduce noise due to the proximity of the fans. The actual design of this is uh, very nicely made, very well machined, and everything looks very good, no damage whatsoever in the packaging. And the way it's set up for the airflow is actually really good for the AM4 setups. Again, depending on what case you're using it in, but essentially the air is going to be pulled in from the top and then ejected out top and bottom. Now, in most situations, this is going to aid with cooling for things like the VRMs, or maybe will be lined up perfectly with where your exhaust fan is. On this particular system, the Inwin B1, with the cooler installed, it actually works fantastically because there is an exhaust fan just here, so the air can come straight out of the cooler, straight out of the case. It saves it being washed around inside the case, as is the case with the AMD stock cooler. Looking at the mounting options, so you've got four screws which are sprung loaded, and again, very, very easy to install using the standard AM4 back plate. Looking at the base of the unit, you can see you've got your two full length heat pipes there. There's eight mil heat pipes and a pretty well machined base. Normally you would get a pad here of the 
Gel Air GC Extreme Thermal Compound, but because I've been doing some testing, obviously I've just cleaned that off, and also so you can get a better look at those heat pipes. One slight distraction for me is the uh, rainbow colored PWM fan, although it is nice that it is a fully wired four pin and not a three pin. The cable itself is actually quite long as well, so if you do have to do some cable routing, not a problem there. Although I think for most systems, if you're looking at a mini ITX setup, you probably could do with a slightly smaller cable. But again, it's relatively easy to cable manage as you see from some of the footage. So that's pretty much it for having a look on there. Let's take a look on the website and we'll go through some of the other details. So this is on uh, Jelly's webpage as of today. And you can see it's a 1U height cooler, 28mm, double high performance heat pipe, silent PWM fan with ball bearing, high airflow and five year warranty. So that's the main highlights there. Obviously, if you want to find out more information about it, I will put links in the video description so you can check it out in great more detail. But essentially, it is a tiny cooler for very, very small enclosures. So we know its size, we know it's cheap, but is it actually any good? So this is a good point now to go over to my PowerPoint and see the results. So starting off, this is the AMD Ryzen 3 2200G using the stock Wraith cooler and versus the Gelid Slim Science AM4. The ambient temperature in the room was 22 degrees and in these results, lower is better. So we've got the first ones, which is the PWM, so that's the standard PWM settings in the system. And with the AMD stock cooler, we got 31 degrees C, which in a 22 degree ambient room isn't great, but certainly passable. The Gelid Slim AM4, again on the PWM setting in idle, managed a 27 degree result. So four degrees less, so that's a, a good start. Next up was the system under full load. This is using Prime 95 with small FFTs. And this was quite shocking to get to 91 degrees on the stock cooler, which was a little bit scary. And there was certainly some throttling involved. Luckily, when we went over to the Gelid Slim AM4, we dropped that by a whopping 15 degrees down to 76, which is still rather warm, but this is a very synthetic load and generally would never happen in real life. But it is a very good, way of showing the difference between the two coolers. Next up, I thought I'd test the fans in their 100% capacity. So these are both fans at full blast in the case with the top on, everything enclosed. And with the AMD stock cooler, we got 30 degrees. Again, 22 degree ambient room and the Gelid managed 26. So again, four degrees difference, which uh, is pretty decent. Moving on to the load temperatures, again, Prime 95, small FFTs, generating as much heat as we can. And we got a slightly better result this time with the AMD stock fan running at 100% of 86 degrees. But again, the Gelid Slim AM4 beat it by a considerable margin and done about 11 degrees better than at 75 degrees C, which uh, again is still pretty decent. And next up, what I thought I'd do is do exactly the same test, but have it completely unrestricted. So I'll remove the case off of the in B1. So allowing airflow directly in and for air to circulate around. Again, ambient temperature in the room, 22 degrees. And this is with the fans at 100% idle and I registered the high and low points. So the low point on the AMD stock cooler with 100% fans with an open enclosure, 25 degrees. And with the Gelid Slim AM4, we beat it by about two degrees. So 23 degrees was registered at the package temperature. Now being that the room temperature was 22 degrees, I think that's pretty outstanding. Moving on to the full load again, Prime 95 of small FFTs. With the case open, we got 75 degrees which again is a pretty good improvement, but again, this is completely unrestricted, which is a pretty unrealistic way of testing. But the Gelid Slim AM4 beat it by a few degrees anyway, and brought it down to 73 degrees. Again, these are completely unrealistic tests, and it's very unlikely that you're gonna have all your cores fully loaded and generating as much heat as possible. But this is a good way of showing the difference between the two coolers. So let's put all that together and see what it looks like at the end. So as we can see from the overall chart, again, 22 degrees ambient temperatures. So what we're looking at essentially is the AMD stock cooler on the left-hand side and the Gelid Slim on the right-hand side. So the best results we had with the AMD stock was 25 degrees at the low point and 75 degrees under full load, the lowest temperature recorded. And as you can see with the case closed and the PWM settings, which effectively is the worst situation, we got 27 degrees and 76 degrees. So pretty much within margin of error. So that was the best of the AMD stock results against the worst of the Gelid Slim AM4. So definitely an improvement there. And under normal circumstances with the PWM rating on the fans under a full load, the biggest difference there about 15 degrees, which I think is a slightly more realistic task. No one is gonna have their fans running at 
and it's also very unlikely that you're going to run system with the case off. So with the case set up as it would be normal with PWM enabled and allowing the CPU to throttle and the fans to throttle to their necessary ratings, the Gelid Slim AM4 did a remarkably good job. So talking about noise levels, now noise levels on these, both of them are actually pretty much silent when they're under normal use under the PWM circumstances. I did notice under full load that they do both give off quite an annoying tone. Uh, the Wraith Stealth actually slightly more so. The Gelid is a slightly higher pitch and not quite as uh, disturbing, but certainly noticeable. So if you're gonna be running it at full RPM, then I would certainly avoid it for things like a media center or if you want it to be completely silent. But under general use, with the cover on and even with the cover off, both of them under normal use were completely silent. So either way, I don't think there's a particular winner here. I would leave that entirely up to you. Okay, so to summarize, is it worth actually buying? Well, for me personally, yes. I think for around about 15 to 20 pounds, I think it's actually an excellent purchase and it's certainly an upgrade over the stock Wraith Cooler. Again, this is gonna come down to personal preference and also your enclosure. If you have an enclosure, which is extremely narrow, then realistically on the market at the moment, there actually isn't a lot else you can choose from at this kind of form factor. But if you do have a little bit of extra room, then certainly there are other options available. And obviously you do have to take into consideration what processor you're using or what APU you're using, because obviously there is only an 85 watt limit for the TDP. So you may find that certain processors are gonna push that to its very limits. So do temper your expectations and do realize that it is essentially a budget cooler and it is exceptionally small. But overall, I think for lower end processors, it's a fantastic choice. So let me know what you think of it in the comments section below. And if you're building yourself an ITX Media Center PC, let me know what you're putting in it. I'll be really interested to know. But I think that's gonna pretty much wrap this one up. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.